So how can we resolve the overfitting issue in the deep neural networks so that our deep neural network can provide the accurate predictions on unseen or tested data as well. Folks, Nitin here and this is the AI University channel. In this video, I'm going to introduce another important layer of the convolution neural networks called as dropout layer. It is very important in order to uh, you know address the overfitting problem in deep neural networks. So in machine learning, uh, regularization is the way to, to prevent uh, overfitting by adding a penalty like L1 and L2 to the loss function. In deep learning, we will see how to make use of dropout to avoid our neural network model uh, getting overfitted. In other words, we will see how to make CNN model more generalized. We will also learn whether this dropout layer should be placed before or after the activation function or layer. So we will be talking about regularization in a neural network. So watch this video till the end. If you are new here then consider subscribing to this channel or if you have already subscribed then click on the bell icon to receive the notifications about hottest technologies of 21st century. GitHub link for all the required Jupyter notebooks is given in the description section. Please don't forget to like and share this video. Overfitting in neural network occurs when after training, the weights of the network get so tuned to the training examples they are given that the network doesn't perform well when given new examples. The idea of dropout is very simple. This layer drops out a random set of activations in that layer by setting them to zero. It's an approach which helps out uh, reducing uh, interdependent uh, learning amongst the neurons. Actually, during the neural network training, there might be chances that neurons can become uh, codependent on each other and as a result of which their weights can affect the optimization process of other neurons. This can cause uh, these neurons getting specialized on training data, but when we provide a new unseen or test data to it, it performs very bad, hence resulting in overfitting problem. Convolution neural networks are very notorious when it comes to overfitting problem. So how can we resolve this issue then? Well, there are two ways to resolve it. Number one, providing a lot of training data to the CNN model so that model can train itself in a more generalized way. Number two, incorporating dropout layer. Since this video is about dropout layer, we will focus on dropout regularization technique only. So let's quickly see how it works. Consider we have this neural network where we have one input layer, two hidden layers and one output layer. Each of these layers are interconnected as you can see here. Here we are planning to apply dropout in these two hidden layers only. So first we pick the probability of dropout or dropout rate of these neurons or activations and we generally take that probability as 0.5. This is because 0.5 is somewhat closer to optimal value. The probability of dropout or dropout rate is denoted by P. Or the small letter p now if you want to get the exact value of p for your particular neural network then you can make use of hyperparameter optimization techniques like grid search random search etc this 0.5 or 50 percent probability tells us that there is a 50 percent chance that any neuron here can be dropped out or knocked off so basically based on this probability value the neurons are picked randomly in order to get dropped out or get inactivated but wait what do we mean when we say neuron will be dropped out or inactivated it means there is a 50 percent chance that the output of the given neuron will be forced to zero so in our diagram these two neurons of first hidden layer gets deactivated and in the second uh, hidden layer these two neurons gets deactivated in the forward propagation this means th that there won't be any input or output connections to these inactivated neurons. These neurons were picked randomly only in order to get inactivated. Hence, we will have much fewer neurons to train uh, depending upon the probability we pick. Now, similar processing will happen in the back propagation also. That is, whichever neurons are currently activated, 
only those neurons weight will be updated during the back propagation in other words we back propagate through the neurons which are currently active or the weights which are currently active since we don't have any connection with deactivated neurons so essentially through these active neurons and back propagation the neural network allow itself to retain the prior knowledge and possess some newer knowledge in the next forward propagation iteration so it is keeping both newer knowledge as well as prior knowledge to reduce overfitting and hence generalizing the model as a whole if you are not aware of concepts like back propagation loss function model training flow in neural network then you can watch this series link of which is given in the i button above so this was the one complete cycle or iteration with respect to neural network training in the next iteration also same thing happen where some of the nodes based on dropout rate or probability will be selected randomly again and then will get deactivated now this all happened when model was getting trained on training data what about the test data what do we do in case of test data set well we just multiply the output of that layer where we have applied dropout with 1 minus p where p is probability of dropout and this will be applicable for any layer where we have applied dropout let's now come on the question of whether the dropout should be placed before or after the activation function well as a thumb rule a dropout should be placed after the activation functions other than relu so folks this is it for this video in the next upcoming videos i will cover explanation of various other layers of convolution neural network before we develop any image recognition object detection related project so here is today's question if we drop out few neurons from uh, the neural network model then what happens to its input and output please post your answers comments in the comment section given below so that i can get a chance to incorporate your feedback you can also post your technical questions in the comment section and i will try to answer the same if you are watching this video and you are not already a subscriber to our channel consider clicking that little subscribe button in case you have already subscribed then click on the bell icon to receive the notifications whenever i will release a new video so thanks for hanging out with me guys i will be covering next topic in the upcoming video so keep on watching thank you